Great. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, so let's see, uh, seeing a quorum today is December 20th. This is the Jones Library Buildings and Facilities meeting. Um, I'd like to make sure that we have a quorum and everybody can see and be seen, hear and be heard. So uh, George? Here. Farah? Here. And Alex Lefebvre, I'm here. And thank you, Sharon, Sherry, for being here. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at nine o'clock, um, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Act of 2021, the meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meeting calendar. I think it's on the town of Amherst, but also on the Jones Library website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their virtual hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Jones Library website, uh, wherever that may be. So um, first item that I have on today's agenda, sorry, I have too many windows open, um, is a uh, motion to approve the minutes of November 15th, 2022. Anyone have a motion? I move to approve the minutes. George, you want to second? I second. I second. Okay. Um, any questions or comments? I did notice that the meeting was at 4.15 in the morning, I think down in the, where it says meeting call to order. I think I didn't change the AM to PM. Yeah, so. <laughs> Other than that, I think it's good. All right. Uh, so, uh, George, uh, yes to approve the minutes, no to not approve the minutes. Yes, I approve. Farah? Yes. And Alex, I vote yes as well. Um, public comment. I do not see anyone in attending the meeting today. Wow, just us birds today. Okay. Um, so the next item then is the delivery van update, which I expect hasn't changed since we're waiting, but if that's changed, let us know, George. Uh, yeah, I did speak with uh, the sales rep of the dealership last week. Uh, they have not heard anything from the factory yet, so uh, it has not put in, been put in the queue to be built, uh, but, but all of the paperwork is in order and it's just waiting for supplies and suppliers. Uh, as we all know, the auto factory business is in flux because of all the supply chain issues and demand. So, uh, so yeah, we're just waiting. No update. Story of everybody, I think, doing uh, anything related to a vehicle right now. Um, Farah, any questions? Yeah. No? Okay. Um, George or Sharon, uh, North Amherst Library building project update. I see there's a hole in the back of the building and it looks like there's the beginning of a foundation. Um, of anything other than my observations as I drive by? Um, That's I all I know. Have, yeah, same here. I haven't gotten any update from Guilford, so I don't think there's anything meaningful to report. Okay. Um, so that takes us to the monthly building and grounds report. Um, and as I gave a brief overview in the trustee meeting um, on, what was that, December? I don't even know what day that was. Whatever it was. 14th. Thank you. December 14th. Um, we know that one of our boilers went out. So now that we in our, we're, we're in our official buildings and facilities meeting. So George, if you want to give the actual report versus what I attempted to do at the meeting, that'd be great. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over it. And if anybody has any questions afterwards, feel free to ask them. Um, so to reiterate, this happened on a Sunday. Uh, I got a phone call from my staff. Uh, one thing I want to clarify that I know was Miss uh, quoted in, in an article is that uh, my staff, my staff didn't smell smoke. There was no smoke involved uh, because this was the gas furnace that flames were just emitting from. So nothing technically was on fire. It's just that the flames were escaping the housing. Uh, so they smelled heat. Uh, and that's what, you know, like if you turn on your furnace for the first time in your house, that, that smell you get for everything warming up for the first time, uh, that's what they smelled and it was an, in, an unusual spot in the building. So they checked on it. That's when they discovered that 
uh, flames were escaping the boiler housing. Uh, they shut the boiler down and called me. Uh, I went on site to investigate. We ensured that the power was shut off to the boiler and that the gas was turned off to that boiler. Uh, and because of the way that they're wired, the boiler next to it was also shut down as a, as a precaution. Um, and then I called our boiler technician who arrived on site the next day. Uh, they removed the gas line from the boiler and disconnected all of the wiring uh, so that there's absolutely no threat or danger. At the time that it was discovered, uh, there were flames escaping the boiler housing but neither the heat sensor, which is above the boilers, uh, which is attached to the fire suppression system, that had not gone off. And each boiler has a built-in switch that is made out of lead. And if it gets too hot, the lead melts, it shuts off the power to the boiler and it shuts off the gas line. That did not melt, that did not activate. So at no time were any staff patrons in danger uh, nothing in the room was in danger of catching on fire as the boiler room is basically a concrete encased room uh, with no flammables in the room itself. Uh, what would have happened if we weren't open and this happened on a holiday weekend, for instance, it would have kept on, the flames would have kept on emitting, the boiler would have gotten harder, hotter, it would have set off the alarm and that switch and shut things down and alerted the fire department. Uh, so because it had not gotten uh, to that point, and I did go on site to ensure that the power was off, the gas was off, uh, I didn't see any need to contact anybody else other than Sharon, the library director at the time, which I did, just to let her know what was going on. Um, so when they came on the next day, on Monday, uh, it was determined that the... Uh, insert liner in the firebox, which is where the flames collect when the boiler is running, uh, had collapsed and allowed the flames to escape through uh, the metal frame of the boiler itself and start to melt the metal. Uh, the insert, because the boilers we discovered were made in the 1970s, they were originally oil boilers that had been converted to gas. So we can only assume that they were converted to gas when they were installed in the 1990s renovation. Uh, to follow up on another concern I heard, uh, because the boilers were installed in the building during the 1990s renovation, uh, there would be no asbestos in them. Uh, they would not have been permitted to have been installed at that time. Uh, the architects and the local building inspectors would have picked up on that if that were the case. Uh, so the insert itself would not have been made out of asbestos. Um, so where it stands right now, the boiler is not operable. It is not repairable. The boiler next to it was rewired so that it could operate independently. Uh, so right now there is no imminent danger um, to the building, to the staff or the public. The other three boilers were inspected as best as they could be without taking them apart. They did note that some of the other inserts do have cracks but none of them are showing any imminent danger of collapsing like this one did. Uh, and it's my plan that when they come for their quarterly service, I'm going to pay the money and have them just do an inspection quarterly uh, just to ensure that the inserts are still in good shape and not collapsing. So I think that's all I have. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, George. Too bad you weren't at the trustee meeting to give that report. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also I'd also like to add that you know in my in my prior job, um, I was both certified in boiler operation and assembly as well as trained in asbestos abatement. So you know I, I it's certainly an area of expertise that I'm very familiar with. So I would say that between me and the boiler tech himself. Uh, making the determination that there's no asbestos in the boiler. I think that's uh, pretty sound professional opinions. Um, if it needs to be taken further, we could certainly have a sample tested, but I do not see the need for that at this time. Okay. 
And can I also say that, uh, so when Grodsky was giving uh, me the, the, the tour of the boilers, um, uh, he did uh, point out the fact that these boilers do not contain asbestos. Oh, that was part of the tour. Okay. Yeah. Um, so does this mean, can we function without this boiler? We can. Um... For uh, just like, <laughs> well, as long as the other three boilers remain operational, it should be okay. It just means that they're working harder. You know, when the, when the building was renovated in the 90s, there were a lot of redundant uh, mechanicals put in place so that if something broke down, other portions of it could make up for the loss. And that, that's really the situation with this. The four boilers all operate on a cycling system so that they're not necessarily all operating at the same time. One takes over when one shuts down. So with three of them, they are still heating the entire building. It's just that they're working more often than if there were if all four were operating. Thank you. Thanks. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I think that Probably, I mean, I would just echo that, um, you know, um, yeah, I think uh, we had Todd Holland at our uh, trustee meeting um, who is on our sustainability committee, but is also a senior mechanical design engineer at UMass. Um, so he's a, a good, good person to have, but he had also sort of echoing to your comment, George said that, you know, he was happy to see that we had four boilers, now three, as, as they're likely able to carry the peak load when temperatures drop, which is obviously when they're working the hardest. So, yeah. That's yeah. Good. So, and, and um, I'll, go, ahead. go ahead. Please. Um, no, I was just going to say, I'll be happy to add that, you know, if, if any further questions arise, uh, I, I'm happy to, to give this review at a trustee meeting as well, as long as my schedule allows it. Yeah. And this meeting's recorded too, so we could also just um, right. you know, send this to the trustees so they have a chance to see it if you're not available. So either way, awesome, um, great. So are there so the backup building project planning like kind of melds into this? So I don't know if there are other um, uh, grounds slash building updates before we move into that piece that you want to share, George. I don't think so. Everything else has been. Uh pretty much business as usual. Okay. Okay. So um, the backup building project planning, I don't know, Sharon, if you want to start or George, where, where we are on that? On the backup building project planning with town? Um, I don't know. Who I'm trying to think. To. I don't know that I have any updates since our last meeting. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled, I believe it's for January 5th, Sharon can clarify that. Uh, but at this point, I don't know that there's anything to report. Am I right on that, Sharon? Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I just received that invite, I think yesterday for a meeting in early January. And the meeting is with whom? This would be uh, Sean Mangano, Jeremiah LaPlante, Rob Mora, Stephanie Ciccarello, so the me and George. The, the tour yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is the group who's done their assessment with town and is helping us to come up with a plan B around backup planning. Yeah, I, so, I understand that the town is trying to decide whether or not they want to hire an engineer architect uh, to decide you know how to move how to move forward how much it's going to cost what what does it what does what's involved in getting us a new hvac system okay this, should we be attending that Sharon? or i don't think you two can because then it's a oh. you know publicly posted meeting but certainly george and i will respond i i think what i understand is that uh, Sean Mangano and, and his, his colleagues at Town Hall will be submitting some kind of written report about their recommendations. So uh, that's what I'm hoping to receive in the next month or so. Okay. So, and, oh, sorry, go ahead, Park. No, go ahead, Alex. I, well, I was just going to say, so, I mean, I, I feel like we have kind of 
three potential paths that we're dealing with, right? So one is because we have three boilers now, right? So one scenario is, um, you know, our existing three boilers, we have a problem and we need to deal with that problem. Um, I mean, what I heard from, uh, I think Grodsky maybe was in the email that you sent Sharon, but also Todd Holland echoed is, you know, the lead time on getting a boiler is like a year. It, it's like getting a new car. <laughs> it's, it's a year. It's very long. So even if we fully designed a system today and put an order in, it would be a year until we had a new boiler in place. Um, so we, we likely need to have a plan around this boiler, one of the three boilers breaking down, and then what do we do in the interim? Um, and yeah. then... And then the scenarios are, you know, if we're closing the building down, you know, a year from now to start construction for the project, you know, whatever the solution is, does it go to there? If the project doesn't move forward, then we are likely looking at a longer time frame of maybe needing to rent a boiler. And then, yeah. So um, on, Jap on the Joint Capital Planning Committee with the schools, when they were in this similar system with the chillers, um, JCPC um, put money aside for the schools to have, it was like a portable, and again, this is where I know nothing about HVAC systems, but I feel like it was like a portable chiller that if the schools needed it, they could do it. So um, I don't know if it makes sense for us to have sort of that same conversation around, you know, I don't, I don't even, can, I don't know whether a chiller works the same way a boiler works is where I have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know if that's a possibility for us to investigate. Um, we, I, I did make an inquiry uh, with Grodsky to uh, start the ball rolling on what it would take if we need to supply the building with a temporary heating system. Um, their salespeople and everybody are on vacation. But I did get a response that they would get back to us when they're able to. Um, I would say that it's not likely there is any kind of plug and play type system that, that will work given the complexity of our building's HVAC, but, uh, but we did start the ball rolling for that what if. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it would be good if we could get from them just what are the possible options, whether it's renting like we did with the chillers or maybe it's another, yeah, I'm not even gonna speculate because I have no idea what I'm talking about. So that would yeah, be- Yeah, me, me neither. <laughs> I know say. what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to speculate. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and then to that end, again, I mean, I know, again, in our trustee meeting, one of the trustees had inquired, you know, sort of to the plug and play is could we, you know, integrate a commercial grade heat pump into the system? And again, it was helpful for me to have Todd, who's a mechanical design engineer who does this. Um, and I guess he had commented that um, they're actually working at UMass to convert their entire system um, to heat pumps, which is very cool. But what he said, and again, George, correct me if I'm, you, you weren't there, but you would probably know equally. Um, he had commented that the technology around heat pumps, that heat pumps don't heat the water temperature high enough for older systems like ours, which are designed to have the water, I think he said like up to 180 degrees. And I'm sure I'm not saying the numbers right, but like a heat pump can only go to 145. So. You, you just, you can't put it you, into our older design system, putting a heat pump in, you'd never get the water hot enough in the winter time, it sounded like, for us to exactly. be able to, yeah, and so he, exactly. had he had commented that unless we are able to do some really incredible work around sealing the envelope of our building, um, or, you know, put in some kind of, I think he said like a fan coil heat pump, but it, it didn't sound like it was a likely solution, and my recollection from my time on this committee is we've sort of done all of the low hanging fruit on sealing the building, that envelope of the building that we can do. So it's not going to get any better likely at this no. point. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay. So that doesn't sound like that's probably a solution for us, at least not without redesigning the entire system. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Which, which of, of note, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when we went to Western Builders, again, that was replacing that was replacing the boilers and things to use our existing design, right? Exactly. So that was replacement in kind. That was not changing how, how anything works. Right. So if we wanted to move to heat pump type systems, 
that's a larger scale than what Western and Builders was looking at because you have to actually redesign the system. Exactly, okay. exactly. Thank you. Also, Farah wasn't here for these things, so it's a little background for her as well. So, Farah, do you have any questions or? No, okay. All right. Um, okay, so then it looks like uh, after your meeting on January 5th from the town, hopefully we'll have a better sense of next steps and putting together a timeline and, and then have some something to report back to the board about um, what what would be next. Great. Right. Anything else? Anyone else have anything not anticipated? Or Yeah, Farah. Sharon, uh, when you were referring to the meeting on the 5th and you said that they might um, hire a consultant for a plan B, is this something the town does? Is it something the library does? No, the town would. Yeah, so Sean talked about he had to discuss it with with Paul, the town manager, to see what path he wanted to take forward. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Keep this short and sweet. And uh, George, keep healing. Hope to see you back in the building soon. Thank you. Look forward to it. <laughs> thank, thank you for everything you're doing. I don't know how you're doing it with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and out, thank you. <laughs> We're making it work. All right. You could write a book on boilers, George. <laughs> I might write business. a book, but I don't I don't know if that's what it'll be on, but <laughs> yeah. All right. thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.